Chapter 2 Daksha Curses Lord Shiva Vidura inquired, Why was Daksha, who was so affectionate towards his daughter, envious of Lord Shiva, who is the best among the gentle? Why did he neglect his daughter Sati? Lord Shiva, the spiritual master of the entire world, is free from enmity, is a peaceful personality, and is always satisfied in himself. He is the greatest among the demigods. So uh, how is it possible that Daksha could be inimical towards such an auspicious personality? My dear Maitreya, to part with one's life is very difficult. Would you kindly explain to me how such a son-in-law and father-in-law could quarrel so bitterly that the great goddess Sati could give up her life? The sage Maitreya said, In a former time, the leaders of the universal creation performed a great sacrifice in which all the great sages, philosophers, demigods, and fire gods assembled with their followers. When Daksha, the leader of the Prajapatis, entered that assembly, his personal bodily luster, as bright as the effulgence of the sun, the entire assembly was illuminated and all the assembled personalities became insignificant in his presence. Influenced by his personal bodily luster, all the fire gods and other participants in that great assembly, with the exceptions of Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, gave up their own sitting places and stood in respect for Daksha. Daksha was adequately welcomed by the president of the great assembly, Lord Brahma. After offering Lord Brahma respect, Daksha, by the order of Brahma, properly took his seat. Before taking his seat, however, Daksha was very much offended to see Lord Shiva sitting and not showing him any respect. At that time, Daksha became greatly angry and, his eyes glowing, he began to speak very strongly against Lord Shiva. He said, all sages, brahmins, and fire gods present, please hear me with attention, for I speak about the manners of gentle persons. I do not speak out of ignorance or envy. Shiva has spoiled the name and fame of the governors of the universe and has polluted the path of gentle manners. Because he is shameless, he does not know how to act. He has already accepted himself as my subordinate by marrying my daughter in the presence of fire and brahmins. He has married my daughter, who is equal to Gayatri, and has pretended to be just like an honest person. He has eyes like a monkey's, yet he has married my daughter, whose eyes are just like those of a deer cub. Nevertheless, he did not stand up to receive me, nor did he think it fit to welcome me with sweet words. I had no desire to give my daughter to this person who has broken all rules of civility. Because of not observing the required rules and regulations, he is impure. But I was obliged to hand over my daughter to him just as one teaches the messages of the Vedas to a Shudra. He lives in filthy places like crematoriums and his companions are the ghosts and demons. Naked like a madman, sometimes laughing and sometimes crying, he smears crematorium ashes all over his body. He does not bathe regularly, and he ornaments his body with a garland of skulls and bones. Therefore, only in name is he Shiva or auspicious. 
Actually, he is the most mad and inauspicious creature. Thus, he is very dear to crazy beings in the gross mode of ignorance, and he is their leader. On the request of Lord Brahma, I handed over my chaste daughter to him, although he is devoid of all cleanliness, and his heart is filled with nasty things. The sage Maitreya continued, Thus Daksha, seeing Lord Shiva sitting as if against him, washed his hands and mouth and cursed him in the following words. The demigods are eligible to share in the oblations of sacrifice, but Lord Shiva, who is the lowest of all the demigods, should not have a share. My dear Vidura, in spite of the requests of all the members of the sacrificial assembly, Daksha, in great anger, cursed Lord Shiva and then left the assembly and went back to his home. Upon understanding that Lord Shiva had been cursed, Nandishvar, one of Lord Shiva's principal's associates, became greatly angry. His eyes became red, and he prepared to curse Daksha and all the Brahmins present there who had tolerated Daksha's cursing Shiva in harsh words. He said, Anyone who has accepted Daksha as the most important personality and neglected Lord Shiva because of envy is less intelligent and because of visualizing in duality will be bereft of transcendental knowledge. Pretentiously religious householder life in which one is attracted to material happiness and thus also attracted to the superficial explanation of the Vedas, robs one of all intelligence and attaches one to fruit of activities as all in all. Daksha has accepted the body as all in all. Therefore, since he has forgotten the Vishnu Pad or Vishnu Gati and is attached to sex life only, within a short time he will have the face of a goat. Those who have become as dull as matter by cultivating materialistic education and intelligence are nesciently involved in fruitive activities. Such men have purposely insulted Lord Shiva. May they continue in the cycle of repeated birth and death. May those who are envious of Lord Shiva, being attracted by the flowery language of the enchanting Vedic promises, and who have thus become dull, always remain attached to fruitive activities. These Brahmins take to education, austerity and vows only for the purpose of maintaining the body. They shall be devoid of discrimination between what to eat and what not to eat. They will acquire money begging from door to door simply for the satisfaction of the body. Maitreya said, When all the hereditary Brahmins were thus cursed by Nandishvara, the sage Bhrigu, as a reaction, condemned the followers of Lord Shiva with this very strong Brahminical curse. He said, One who takes a vow to satisfy Lord Shiva, or who follows such principles, will certainly become an atheist and be diverted from transcendental scriptural injunctions. Those who vow to worship Lord Shiva are so foolish that they imitate him by keeping long hair on their heads. When initiated into worship of Lord Shiva, they prefer to live on wine, flesh, and other such things. Since you blaspheme the Vedas and the Brahmins, who are followers of the Vedic principles, it is understood that you have already taken shelter of the doctrine of atheism. The Vedas give the eternal regulative principles for auspicious advancement in human civilization, which have been rigidly followed in the past. The strong evidence of this principle is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is called Janardhan, the well-wisher of all living entities. 
by blaspheming the principles of the Vedas, which are the pure and supreme path of the saintly persons, certainly you followers of Bhutapati, Lord Shiva, will descend to the standard of atheism without a doubt. When such cursing and counter-cursing was going on between Lord Shiva's followers and the parties of Daksha and Bhrigu, Lord Shiva became very morose. Not saying anything, he left the arena of the sacrifice, followed by his disciples. O Vidura, all the progenitors of the universal population thus executed a sacrifice for thousands of years. For sacrifice is the best way to worship the Supreme Lord, Hari, the Personality of Godhead. My dear Vidura, carrier of bows and arrows, all the demigods who were performing the sacrifice took their bath at the confluence of the Ganges and the Yamuna after completing the Yajna performance. Such a bath is called Avabrita Snana. After thus becoming purified in heart, they departed for their respective abodes. Thus ends the second chapter of the fourth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Daksha Curses Lord Shiva.